When you think about what the rapid transit caravan was to auto marketing in 1970 and 71, I think this car represents the climactic moment in that marketing. And frankly, you can't put a price on what it is in terms of its importance to both the Mopar hobby and the custom car hobby. It's, it's a fabulous vehicle. Looks like a sensational year for Plymouth's rapid transit system for 1970. I'm Chuck Miller. I uh, grew up in Lincoln Park, Michigan. Customized cars, hot rods, customs, prototypes, one-offs, specialty vehicles, things like that. That's what I've done all my life. Well, I think Chuck Miller really came onto the scene by winning the Riddler Award in 1968, but ironically, what he became probably most famous for beyond that was when he did the Red Baron. It was originally designed by Tom Daniel. I just created the, the real one, and that went on to be probably one of the best sellers that Monogram ever had. Chuck Miller had done another car for Bob Larravee, and it was called the Sonic Cuda. It was not just radical, but it was very cleanly done. The styling was magnificent, the way the grill was shaped. Chuck Miller executed that in steel, not in fiberglass. And all the other details that went onto that car, it just looked very, very professionally done. Everything just seemed to be snowballing back then in the 60s for me, and I was very, very fortunate and lucky to be able to do that. In 1970, Plymouth was all in. They had gotten Richard Petty back from Ford. They had Sox and Martin, and they wanted to promote their performance car line. But what they also wanted to do was promote the customization of cars as well, and that was how the Rapid Transit System Caravan came about. So what better way to promote modifying your car with factory parts but to have customized cars on display? The three cars that they selected were the new Duster, which had just come out, and the final design of the square model of the Roadrunner for 1970. But perhaps the most impressive one was the E-Body, the Barracuda that went to Chuck Miller. They really liked the Sonic, so they brought me a brand new Cuda. And we liked the front of that Sonic so much, we want to copy that, but change a couple things. Take the metal and break it, and roll it, and shape it, you know, and weld it in the front and see how this looks, and that was it. What's really cool about this car is this was a high option six-pack car, so not only is it an early build, it was serial number 005, but it's got a deluxe interior in it, it's got a six-pack motor in it, it's a shaker car. I mean, there's tons of stuff about this car that a collector who understands vintage Mopars would love. But obviously, with the changes that were done to it, I mean, it's an amazing historical artifact, too, from the custom car business and also from this idea of these factory touring cars. There's nothing like this car in the world. I painted it white, silver, lime, and charcoal pearls. And they did the dealerships for the year. End of the year comes. They want to do the next year in 71. They came back to me with the car. I said, well, we can't show that same car again this year. We got to paint it. We got to do something. What they really wanted to do was just renew it. And what they had Chuck do was repaint it. They gave him the sketches and what needed to be executed in terms of the paint changes. And they went from what was basically some greens and some other colors to a brighter orange, a more fiery look to the new car design that they were putting together, but without changing the physical structure of the car itself. Chrysler, they oh, the show's over. We're not going to do the RTS in 72, so we're just going to mothball them. Well, things happen. Things get out, and people talk. Anyways, they, they started to get sold. The gentleman that owns it, he bought the car, took it home. So he parked it in the garage. It sat for 40 years. It was just gone. It was just gone. And what's so cool is that, you know, now that it's shown back up, and especially in the condition it is in, you can't you can't put a price on that. I mean, the car's got under a thousand miles on it. It's got about 970 miles on it. It was never abused. It was never left outside. It was not exposed to sunlight. The interior is pristine. I mean, the rest of the car just presents itself so well for what it is. And again, for the work that was done to it back in 1970 and 71. When you think about what the Rapid Transit Caravan was, I think this car represents the climactic moment in that marketing. This is what they did in the 70s, and that's where this car sits. It's, it's in the history books, and that's the way it should stay. I think that a car like this really encapsulated 
the whole customization scene with the late model vehicles and the kind of things that could be done. And obviously the fact that it stayed preserved the way it is, it's wonderful. You can't put a price on that. You can't put a price on its preservation. And frankly, you can't put a price on what it is in terms of its importance to both the Mopar hobby and the custom car hobby. It's, it's a fabulous vehicle.